going on y'all hope you all had a good weekend um we are actually gonna start looking at some of the important details we need to know about as we get into china and so we're gonna start by looking at the geography and the kind of the politics in china um so we're not gonna talk about the great wall today but we will get there i promise um first thing we're gonna look at is just figuring out roughly where in the world China is. Um, so if you look here, China is in Eastern Asia, um, on the other side of the world from the US. Um, it is the largest country in Eastern Asia at a, about 3.7 million square miles. Um, I think China is the fifth largest country in the world in terms of just a land area. Um, but it's the largest country in Eastern Asia it actually shares a political border with 14 other countries. Um, some of the notable ones being India, North Korea, Russia, and Vietnam. Um, and so China's history covers thousands of years. Um, we're not gonna get into it much today, but eventually we will get into some of that ancient history and then later on we'll get into the more modern stuff. Um, so the current political structure of China. Um, officially, it is run by the Chinese Communist Party, um, which governs a lot of the affairs of the country. Um, the current president chosen by said Communist Party is Xi Jinping, um, and he has been the president of China since 2013. Um, the country, China has a Congress, but I mean, it doesn't really do much unless the Communist Party tells it to do it. So it has a Congress, but it's kind of limited to what the Communist Party wants done in China. So if the Communist Party doesn't want something done, Congress doesn't do anything. Um, so that is a very brief um, th simplification of Chinese politics. Um, down the road, we'll get into a, a little more detail, but for now... Um, that's where we're at. So one thing I want to mention is we'll look at is where do most people in China actually live? Given that it's the largest country in the region, it makes sense to look at where do most of these people live. Um, as of July of this year, China has a population of about 1.4 billion people. Um, one way we can look to see where most of those people live is by looking at what's known as a population density map. Um, and so population density is just the number of people for, per square mile who live in an area. So in this case, this map has it in square kilometers, but you can find it in square miles as well. Um, there are estimates because data is questionable at best coming from China that there, China has over 10 different mega cities. Remember, those are cities that have at least 10 million people in them. Um, estimates are that there, China has at least 10 of those. Um, so if you can kind of look on this map here, you can kind of see where most people live. Um, the darker the shade, the color, in this case, the reds, the browns, means there are more people living in that area than others. So you notice in through here, down here, and then different pockets through here. Basically, this entire eastern portion here is where most of it, most of the people in China live. Um, for the most part, they mostly live in that circled area right there. Um, the reason being, there are two rivers that run pretty much right through this right through this region right here. Um, you can't really see them on this map, but you have the Yellow and the Yangtze rivers. Um, those run through uh, this part of China, which is largely why most of the people who live in China live in this this region. Um, I do want to point out if the further west you go in China, so out in here. There's hardly no one. Um, 
we'll get into that a little bit, but there is a lot of there aren't very many people who live in the western portions of China. Most of them live along the eastern coast because of those two rivers. All right. So speaking of the rivers, the two that we need to focus on where this is. There we go. Are the Yellow and the Yangtze rivers. Um, Pretty much the entire eastern part of the country is dominated by these two rivers and their river valleys. Um, these rivers are so good at f for fertileness, for farming, that oftentimes the land around these rivers can be used to complete two different harvests in a single year. Um, often they'll start, they'll plant one crop in the spring, harvest it in July, August, and then plant another one and harvest it in October, November. So because of these two rivers, a lot of the eastern part of China can be used through pretty much year round for farming, which means the amount of food that is being grown in this region is insanely high. Um, there's a ton of food here, which is largely how China is able to support the massive population it has is by pretty much relying off of the farming outputs of these two river valleys. Um, so the Yellow and the Yangtze rivers, um, you can see up here the, how, how many miles that each one is. Yellow is approximately 3,400. Uh, Yangtze is 3,900. I believe, if I remember reading it right, the Yangtze is the world's third longest river behind the Nile and the Amazon, if that gives you an idea of how massive this river is. Um, so if you were to travel across China, which given the current circumstances is unlikely, um, you would probably find just about every possible climate type you could possibly imagine. Um, tundra, deserts, rainforests, plateaus, you name it. I'm gonna say China probably has it, um, as well as different physical features as well. Um, if you go to the northern portions of the country up near the Russia, you can find tundra. If you go, also you can find tundra down in the southern part of the country along the border of India, Nepal, and that area because of the Himalayans, you can find tundra there. Um, in the eastern portions of the country and southern portions, you can find rainforests. As you get closer to Vietnam, Laos, those areas, you can run into um, tropical rainforests, that kind of thing. Um, now, as you go out west, if you remember, out west there weren't a lot of people. That's because a lot of what you see out west are very massive mountain ranges, um, extremely high plateaus. The Tibetan Plateau is one of those. And there are two different deserts in the western portions of China. The Gobi and the Taklamakan, I believe is how you say it. Um, so the western part of China is... It's livable, but it's not the greatest place to live. So that's why a lot of Chinese live in the eastern portions of the country. Um, and to give you guys kind of an idea of the climate map, down in here is that Tibetan Plateau. And then up in here is the other part, um, temperate, kind of moderate. I'd say kind of like here, um, can have cold winters doesn't really happen very often. Can also have hot summers, but it depends. And then down here you get into the monsoons and tropical regions. Uh, last thing we're gonna look at for today is just natural resource placement in China. Um, China is home to numerous natural resources that fuels economic and energy needs. Um, has a lot of oil, natural gas, coal, um, things you typically think of in industry. Um, natural gas, uh, iron, copper. So just things that are worth money, China has. Um, one thing that they also have that you can't really say anywhere else in the world is China is actually home to a lot of the world's um, rare earth elements. And there's a couple of those things, but basically those are elements that are extremely hard to find um, often found in very remote places of the of the planet, 
that just so happens that a lot of those were very remote places are in China. Um, a lot of those things are things used for um, space exploration, cell phone technology, or material, um, things that are in high demand now with technology being growing the way it is. Um, and the materials needed to produce these te this technologies that we have, for the most part, can only be found in China. So that's why China is such a huge player on the global stage is because they control access to a lot of the rare earth minerals that are needed to produce um, different technologies and industries. So that is all I have for today. Um, I am going to, um, if I can find it, pull up the questions for today. Maybe, there we go, let me find it. So if you need me to read, or wanna hear me read through these questions, you can. Um, if you don't wanna hear that, you're good to go ahead and stop the video here and start working on the questions. Um, so if that's the case, I hope you all have a good rest of the day. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, if you're sticking around, we will go through the questions here shortly. Um, so question one, how many countries share a border with China? Uh, 14, five, three, or nine. Who is the current president of China? Xi Jinping, Mao Zedong, or Chiang Kai-shek? Uh, question three, how many people live in China as of July 2020? Uh, 1.4 billion, 300 million, 1 billion, or 700 million? Question four, what is population density? Question five, true or false, most people live in the eastern portion of China. Question six, what are the two major rivers that run through eastern China, the yellow and Yangtze, Indus and Ganges, white and blue, or the Ohio and white? Question seven, what are some of the different climates you might find if you were to travel across China? And then question eight, China is home to various rare earth mineral elements used to power technology and other growing industries, true or false. Um, so that's all I have for you all. I hope you all have a good rest of the day and I will see you all tomorrow.